Good afternoon to you. I'm hoping you're having a fantastic midweek. Uh, we're having a midweek party up in here. My name is Prosper Tarowinga and you're about to watch a 30-minute segment of the Lunch and Learn. So if this is the first time you're tuning in, grab a note paper and a pen because this one is going to be a really, really good one. We're talking about how to actually market your business um, you know, on a tight budget. So a lot of us really want to be known, really want to put our messages out there, but we don't quite have the budget or we don't quite know how to actually do do it and the reason why I do that is because my mission is to help entrepreneurs such as yourself to uh, not hear this but to actually set up um, you know reliable and lucrative businesses um, that are actually profitable and enjoyable all right so you, we do this by sitting around every single day for 30 minutes at 2 p.m. AEST take note of that and we talk about how you can capture the right people um, you know create the right content so you can engage those people educate them inspire them and provide them with value and then most of all convert those people into paying clients and then pretty much after that utilize that for branding your own authority and creating relationships so that like I keep saying your business can be profitable and enjoyable. So if you're watching the replay right now, I want you to type in the number two. It just gives us that confirmation that there's people that are watching this and there's also people that actually care and value, um, you know, our content. It also just gauges, um, you know, how far we're reaching with, um, you know, these live videos. Because like I say, all you can do is all that you can do. I see Scott Woodrow has just tuned in. What's going on, brother? Hope you're having a fantastic hump day. Yes, it is Wednesday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Duncan Musaka, and I can also see uh, Richard, uh, Sally. Thank you all for tuning in. All right. So like I mentioned earlier on, um, basically we're talking about ways for you to actually market your business on a budget. Now, how many of you guys are actually finding it difficult to reach your audience right now, um, you know, or to get any sort of attention, uh, maybe for your message or for your websites or for your social media? If you are finding it difficult to get attention, I want you to type in the number one. If you are somewhat getting by, can you type in the number two? If it's totally difficult, Difficult for you to get by can you type in the number three I just really want to have an understanding of who is online right now I see Sheridan has just tuned in thank you so much I'm hoping you're feeling better right now and also doing well with your work right there and um if this is your first time tuning in, welcome aboard. Um, like I said, this will be a 30-minute segment where we're really talking about how you can bust a nut or two and actually, um, you know, really reach out uh, to your audience and get their attention and actually, um, you know, sell to the audience so that your business can be profitable and can be enjoyable. Now, wouldn't that be nice? All right. Now, you know, here's a situation that I'm sure... Everybody who's watching right now can resonate with, you know, you probably have a small budget and you've got really, really big dreams. You know, um, when the Facebook ad that sold you onto the dream that you have, um, you know, came by, it came with, um, you know, pina coladas uh, on the beach and you working by the beach or, you know, four hour work weeks, like what Tim Ferriss has written, et cetera, et cetera. But all of that just exists in misleading Facebook ads. When you start, you know, really working on your business, when you start creating for and relating to your audience, it's not the, the same way as the Facebook ads, um, you know, have predicted or put it out there. So you might, you know, really have really, really big dreams. You want to have, you know, grow your own business. You want to become your own boss. But money and cash flow are tight and that means um you know you're going to reserve that cash flow for things that are really really important and you're you're going to skimp on your marketing now does this sort of sound like you does this sound like like you're the person who's got a small budget and maybe big dreams I want to know the people that are actually watching here because, um, you know, if you're doing well, then maybe this won't be the video for you. But if if you've got really small budgets and, and, and really big dreams, then I want you to continue watching this video. You know what I mean? Because I run a, um, a digital agency, Live Long Digital, and I get a lot of requests 
um, you know, um, for people that want a strategy session from me because we do a lot of marketing in and around, um, you know, um, the websites on and off online, etc., etc. So there's people that want um, maybe, um, you know, a strategy created for them. There's people that want implementation of maybe they've heard me speak about the blueprint or they, they want me to help them with their SEO, or, but they're on a minimum budget. You know, and then and, and, and this happens on a daily basis. You know what I mean? Not a lot of businesses are actually making money out there. Like I said in the other video, um, 97% of the video of, of the, um, you know, small businesses in Australia um, are run by people like you and me. All right. And then pretty much from that 97%, maybe 30 to 40% are not going to make it past year one, year two, year three. All right. So. That's why, you know, people like me come in because we help you to actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I see Anna Osherev has just tuned in. Thank you so much for joining us today. All right. So luckily, we as entrepreneurs, we love that challenge. And I also love a challenge when somebody comes to me and says, I don't have that much of a budget, but let's see how we can work together. You know what I mean? Because now we've become experts in achieving a very lot um, you know, a lot of results for people with very little. All right. And how do we manage to do this? Um, I'm going to be sharing some of my secrets in this particular video right now. So if you know somebody who's struggling with their marketing, if you know somebody who's struggling with their business, somebody who's struggling with their cash flow, tag them in this video right now because I'm giving out the secrets that we're using and we're also uh, giving out to people that have a very low budget so that their businesses can be profitable and enjoyable. And if you may, you can actually share this video from this point on because I'm going to be giving you the effective digital marketing strategies for bootstrapping, um, especially if you're a startup or if you're a small business. All right. And I'm going to just give it away right from the get go. First of all, you got to make sure you're doing good work. You got to make sure you're doing good art because that's the only thing that gets remarkable. That's the only thing that people share. All right. Now, I want you to maybe re remember a time or, or the last time you went and watched a movie. All right. And um, have you ever walked out of a movie or have you ever heard somebody who's watched the same movie that you've watched repeating maybe a couple of lines from that movie, um, you know, that they watched and you guys instantly connect? Now, what I'm trying to say is if you make good art, people will talk about it. It will be remarkable, you know, just like how, you know, good movies end up as people start talking about those lines in that movie. If I say I'll be back, you remember, you would know that I'm talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger's movie. If I talk about, um, I can't really think of movie lines right now, but you, you get what I'm trying to say. All right. So make good art. Do good work. So if you are ever going to get anything from this video today, get those three little words. Make good art. Because that's the only thing that people will talk about. If you make people happy, if you make people laugh, if you make people get results from the work that you're putting out there, they will talk about you at a barbecue. That's the first thing that you can absolutely do, even if you've got a low budget or even if you've got a high budget. If your work is good enough for people to talk about, they definitely will talk about it. All right. And I see Charlie O'Shea has just tuned in. What's going on, brother? Thank you so much for um, tuning in. The next thing that you really want to grasp and, and those that are really enjoying this video right now, tag somebody who might really want to hear about this so that it can actually help them by actually helping them. The next thing that you really want to make sure within your business is once you're doing good work, that good work becomes your message. All right. And then when you've got that good work, make sure that message goes to a market. Be specific on who has to actually hear that message because not everyone is your customer. Because if you're going to be spraying and praying with your marketing, then you're wasting advertising money. You're wasting, um, you know, advertising budgets. You're wasting your time. You're wasting the listener's time. 
All right. Whenever people don't understand, is this meant for me? And whenever people don't understand, is this book written for me? Whenever people don't understand, was this book meant for me? It's going to be difficult for them to actually listen to the message. So you have to have really good work, like I said, and then it creates what is called a permission asset. Once you've got permission to sell to me, I will then start listening. All right. You can't sell to somebody who hasn't given you permission to sell to them. So once you're doing good work, you've got a message now that goes to a specific market. You now need to choose the channels of how you're reaching out to that audience wisely. I see Lucas just tuned in. Nicole, my love, what's going on? Haven't seen you in a minute. Jacob Bradley, thank you so much, brother, for walking. Um, <laughs> your last name is Walker. I was going to say thank you so much for walking by um, You know this video. So like I said, your message, your market, you got to now be specific about the media. As you can tell and as you will notice, um, you know, what's actually happening right now. Facebook is under scrutiny for having leaked people's data, etc., etc. And guess what's going to happen? People are going to shrug away from, um, you know, using Facebook as a platform. Now, if you have been noticing as well that Facebook, even the reach has been dwindling, the, the reach has been getting smaller and smaller. And, and if you have just been, and you know, basing or standing on one media channel as um, you know the way you're reaching out to your audience, it's gonna be grand opening and grand closing for you. All right. So, like I said, your media, your market, and when you actually now choose your channel, which is the, you know, which is how you deliver your message. You know, it, it makes it a whole lot easier whether you move from one platform to another. People will still remember what you said. Why? Because you're doing good work because you're making good art. I see Nicole has just tuned in. Thank you so much for um, your time today. I hope you're having a fantastic meet week session wherever you're at right now. All right. So all of these are effective digital markets. Have you noticed we haven't even gotten into the whole trickery of, um, you know, tools and, and tactics and everything else. It's just what your message is what that market really needs to be and the media. And I'll be playing around those three M's. And if it's the only thing that you really get from this um, show today, make good art. That's the only thing that people care about these days. Not about how fun your videos are, not about how your content comes into the news feed, not about how your blog is situated or what trickery you got them into signing up to your news list. If you're not making good art, if you're not putting out good work, nobody will care. All right, whatever you're going to say is going to mean jack diddly if you're not specific about your market and what channels you're going to be using in order for you to reach out to them. Message market media. All right. So this is for those people that have a, um, you know, a really tight budget and really want to make sure they get a proper return of their investment as soon as they put money in and then they get some sort of cash outlay. So by choosing your channels wisely, we are, we are all caught up in, in the angst. Um, you know, that is caused by the lack of money because guess what? We we are forced or we are shown how other big companies are, um, you know, advertising. You know what I mean? We forget one thing. Everyone has a limited marketing budget. You know what I mean? Not even the giants like Apple or Coca-Cola are just spreading money out there. They are working within a budget. So... I mean, obviously their budgets are huge, you know what I mean? But they still work hard at choosing the right channels that give them the right return on their own investment. And why, why would they do that? Because nobody wants to waste money. And especially if you don't have that money, why would you want to waste something you don't have? So make sure that whatever you're going to be doing, you're not going to have to do it twice. Do it once and for all. Or what the, what the carpenters say, measure twice and cut once. Do you know what I mean? So if you're a small business and you're with small budget, this is actually really, really important. Figure out what are you good at? Who needs, um, you know, what are you good at? What are you selling? Who needs it? And where can you find them? And then just specifically go to that uh, channel instead of you being spreading yourself too thin and then, you know, becoming a high sounding nothing, you know, because you can't afford to waste money. So you want to start by choosing the right digital marketing channels. And mind you, this is not an easy task. 
Right now, can you tell me where you think your audience is actually situated within the whole online space? Can you just type in where you think is the best place to, 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 to find your, your, your audience right now? Where are they congregated? Where would they be? If, if you would go out and find 10 customers of your own right now, where would you specifically go, especially in your business? Please type it in the comments there. You know? Because there's hundreds of channels. There's hundreds and each of them offer a rabbit hole in and of itself. You know what I mean? There's social media, there's email, there's PPC ads, there's SEO, you know, there's display ads, there's content marketing, all of that. And guess what? Every new thing that comes on the market, marketers find a way to ruin it. So if you're hearing about something from a Facebook ad, guess what? People have already raped it and they've already ruined it in as much as you are a late arriver. All right. So you need to know specifically where your audience congregates. And I see Mike has just tuned in. What's going on, brother? Do you know what I mean? This is just a few of the things that we're exposed to. Because if you don't know where your client is right now at a quarter past two, then you have lost everything. You know, you wouldn't know what to do at 4 p.m. Because then if you know where your client is, are they in the office or are they taking their kids from school? Because if you post a blog at that particular time, are they going to see it or are they going to wait until they finish making dinner for their family? So that's how much you need to know your market. And each of them, each of these platforms I'm talking about, it comes with its own limitations. So you now have choice paralysis. Is that what they call it? Paralysis of choice. And it's real. The struggle is real right there, you know? So do you know exactly what your customer is doing right now at a quarter past two? Please, if you know, can you type it down right now? You know, because you'd like to, 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 I mean, you would want to use platforms that are already where your customers are if you don't have money, you know? Because if you go off the beaten track, how are you going to reach to new people? People need to hear your stuff six to eight times in order for it to catch fire. And that costs money. It's not going to be easy for somebody to pay attention to you if you haven't gotten their attention in the first place. So in order to make the right choice, you really need to start with your buyer persona. Who is going to buy my products? What frustrations am I actually fixing? Who needs me in the market? What would happen if I'm not there? All of those questions. Are you asking yourself those questions? Am I needed in the market? Is this product, if I don't exist, does somebody suffer? Because if you're not asking yourself all those deep questions, my friend, that's the reason why it's crickets in your funnels. That's the reason why it's crickets in your bank account right now. Find out who your ideal customer is. Where do they hang out online? What publications? What are they buying on Amazon? You know, what do they like? Who are they listening to? And what tone of voice actually appears, appeals to them? Some people like to be told what to do. Some people like to make their own decisions. Find out, is your customer that person? What, how am I reaching out to them? And how are you going to know you're getting the right person? What is the feedback that you should be getting from that buyer persona to actually solidify that you are doing good work that they absolutely need? Make good art. If that's the only thing you get from this video today, make good art. And Mike says, these are great questions. Does my existence solve somebody's suffering? Absolutely. You know, they're not giving out participation trophies out there, my man. All right. You've got to really reach out to people because you know what? We are now over. It's called infobesity. There's a lot of obesity caused by food. Now there is infobesity, right? Let me coin that term. Infobesity. Everybody's bloated with information. Right now, you got to be that person that actually, um, you know, um, what, 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 what do we call it? be succinct with that information make sure you make it succinct enough that it, it, it fills them up everybody is bloated with information so make sure whatever work you're putting out there is good art make good art and your budgeting and your your, your marketing budget won't be uh, strained a whole great deal you know 
And if you answer these questions like what Mike is saying, your choice is half made. If you know where to find your next 10 customers right now, can you type in the number one? All right. And um, I see Christine Stowe has just tuned in. Thank you so much. Uh, Nicole says he's good. <laughs> good. I will watch it again. Absolutely. And share sh share this if you can with your with your other mates that really have you know are running on a low budget but really want to reach out to their audience there. And if you can actually answer the questions that I asked earlier on, as in who needs what you're selling and who whose existence is not going to be an enjoyable existence if you don't exist or if your message doesn't exist in the in the market right there, you know, and then the rest would be covered by whatever budget you have. So there's no point in you spreading yourself too thin without a message that resonates to a market, you know, start with maybe one or two channels. And then that you can actually afford to be present because if you can show your customers, you can help them by actually helping them. Then I'll tell you something. They would actually anticipate that you want, you have a solution um, for them. Now, Mike says he always gives me so much to think about. Gonna rewatch. Thank you so much, Mike. And Kristen says, everybody wants me to find them money in grants. Absolutely. But you need to answer the question, what would the grants, um, you know, fulfill for these people? What is it that they actually want? It's not grants they want. What do they want? Is it a better lifestyle, a better business, a business that's profitable and enjoyable? Because right now you're pushing a product. What is the feeling? What is the thing that people absolutely want so that they come to you and, and, and say and knock on your door, Christine, and say, because of you, I did not give up. What is it that they absolutely want from you? You need to find that. And if you can specify what that particular thing is, I assure you people would be tripping, stumbling and falling to come and get more of what you're selling right there. All right. So you, you really have to be really succinct and show people you can help them by actually helping them. And half of the time is... Um, Christine says, I'm wondering why they want money. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not getting that one, but that's all right. And also, if, even though the internet has spread open and you can become a global business, sometimes you probably don't need that. You know, we've actually had excellent results with clients um, that we've steered towards their own local audiences. You know what I mean? We've actually started getting a lot of results, um, you know, w w by just remaining local because people want to do business with those they know, like and trust. Yes, you could be, um, you know, um, you know, international or global. But are you able to service that person, especially in different time zones? Um, the people want the assurance that will you pick up their phone just in case something go goes wrong in the service that you're providing, you know? And remember what I said about dreaming big. It's okay. Everybody wants to be known as the maybe sole provider of a certain product or a service globally, which is like maybe you want to be the Uber of whatever, you know, service you're, you're serving or you want to be the McDonald's, um, you know, of your industry. Because whenever you, you, you talk McDonald's, it's synonymous with fast food, you know what I mean? But such reputation, it takes money, time and effort. And by money, I'm talking billions to build. So just because you've got a website, it doesn't mean you, you, you become global. You know what I mean? You're not big shark. You know who is international, bruv. You need to check his statistics. All right. Plus, it's not really profitable for a small business, whether you're local or not. Just find out. Do you really need to extend or stretch yourself so much? Because it comes with customer care. It comes with understanding the different cultures of the people you're reaching out to, etc., etc. You know? So is it profitable for you to actually really go global? Or are you actually better off with the people that actually understand who you are and can know, like, and trust you within your local um, periphery? You know? Because I've always given this example, um, you know, if you really want to rank your website, because my main job is search engine optimization, you know what I mean? And, and maybe you are a 
crafter or a creator of wedding dresses. If you just write in wedding dresses, it's much more easier for you to rank a number one for handmade wedding dresses in Melbourne or handmade wedding dresses in, in Sydney or handmade wedding dresses in Perth. Because whatever somebody's gonna search for something, they're gonna look at who will give me the, 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 the service cheaper, better, faster. So you wanna be found in your local area as well. You know? Better yet, it's actually more profitable. You know why? Because people that actually use long tail keywords, people that say, um, you know, dentist near me, uh, know exactly what they're looking for. You know what I mean? And they're likely ready to buy, they probably have a bleeding neck. So if you just, rank for the word dentist, they're not going to know, are you the dentist around the corner that they can actually just reach out to? I, I'm, I'm asthmatic. You would see my inhaler. You know, half the time if I go out and there's people smoking around me or there's dust and fumes from the cars, I just type in pharmacy near me so that I know just in case I start wheezing, I can, I, I, how much longer would it take me to get to a pharmacy? You know? How much longer would it take me to get to a pharmacy? I'm not just going to type in pharmacy. No, I want to, to, to cure my pain as soon as possible. So that's exactly what your clients are doing as well. Try being local because it makes you, you know, people reach you faster, cheaper, and you, you, you will be of a better preference because you know what? People can pick up the phone and call you or just drive around the corner and get whatever service you, you're getting, you know? And Nicole says, I was thinking... I was thinking you become more profitable based on the weight and value you hold, right? Um, sorry if it doesn't make sense. I mean, well, you, value is good. That's the reason why I took off because I had over four thousand five hundred people from all over, um, you know, all over the, the 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 world. But I cut it all into half. You know why? I really want to reach to people that know I can help them immediately and I can help them there and there. Do you know what I mean? So, like I say, I, I help people with search engine optimization. Those people that put generic inquiries, they're probably just window shopping, which means it's not a good return of investment for you. So you want to leverage the power of location, maybe within your social media, you know, your content marketing, your SEO, your PPC, um, you know, ads, wherever you can actually insert your name, uh, you know, in, within your city, within your neighborhood. Because let me tell you something, people would support to build, a, I mean, people would support a wall that they helped to build. You now create instant rapport if you say I'm an SEO agent in Melbourne instead of saying to somebody in Phoenix, Arizona, who's never heard of Melbourne, Australia. You know what I mean? So is your business a local business or a global one? Nonetheless, why pass on clients that are in your backyard? People are more likely to do business with local companies. So why not use that to your advantage? So like I'm saying, if you haven't really caught up to what we're talking about in this video, I'm just giving you all the ideas that you can actually start marketing your business for free. Throwing in $500, $300 every single day on Facebook and you're targeting people that don't even care about your work my man why would you be doing that why would you be stealing from yourself and one other thing that a lot of people would not do is if you're not doing good art nobody would remark your work so if you do good art if you do good work you get reviews all right and scott says prosper i can listen in because i'm in a cafe but i love your work mate keep going thank you so much scott thank you so much Try and get testimonials and case studies maybe on your website because you know what? People do business with those they know, like, and trust. And these days, you know, people would trust um, other people that have gone through the experience. Be Instead of you saying, look at me, look at me, you can actually have other people as being your ambassadors. You know, like those people I was talking about earlier on that if you've watched a movie, you, you, you go out of the movie and you're repeating words that have been said in that movie. And guess where that comes in? It creates your branding. It creates a community around the work you're doing and you build loyalty and ambassadors around the work and it makes it cheaper for your marketing, you know? So you can encourage people to leave reviews on Facebook, on, on Google, on Yelp. I think there's another one called Trustpilot. I'm not endorsing any of those, but 
user generated content is also really good for SEO and it makes it a whole lot easier for Google to rank you. You know why? Because you're a trusted source. So we encourage people to leave reviews by, you know, maybe offering little incentives and maybe a discount for, um, I don't know, bringing new referrals, etc., etc. Anything you can think of that is useful for you and your customers. Because satisfied customers are usually the best brand ambassadors. All right. I really hope that this video has been useful for you. And if you have tagged anyone that would have, you know, really, really gotten, um, you know, insights as to how to actually market a business on a chip. You know what I mean? I'm just going to wrap things up here. You know, it's, it's, it's cash flow is really important, especially in your business. And the biggest thing that people skimp on is marketing when it comes to le less funds. So it's not fun to start counting pennies and think, how am I going to spend them best? You know what I mean? And I know that it's not easy. All right. But I also know that with a bit of creativity, you know what I mean? And, 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 and thorough, thorough research, you can actually achieve grand results. You can actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. There's always a better way to get things done. Stop trying to bite things that you cannot chew or you cannot swallow. And not, and not a lot of marketing involves a lot of wads of cash. Just put out good work right there. Put out good content. Engage your audience. Do remarkable stuff so that people can talk about you. You don't really need to spend that much on your marketing. But if you think maybe I could be helpful in your marketing and how I can actually amplify your business, let's get in touch. Let's have a chat. Let's see how far we can take your business so that it can actually be profitable and enjoyable. Because I believe your business can be one day. In the meantime, if you've got any questions, let's continue the conversations down below. That, that was like a good segue, isn't it? Down below. <laughs> fantastic. Hope you're having a fantastic week. I will see you guys tomorrow. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions, let's keep this going. In the meantime, thank you so much for paying attention. I mean, you could be anywhere else in the world right now or in Australia doing whatever makes your business profitable and enjoyable, but you chose to stay with me. Bye for now, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.